Hey, usually when we think of revolutionaries and other inspiring people that change the world, we tend to see them as very selfless people. They're generous, they give to others. So it's no surprise that if we want to be revolutionaries ourselves, we're going to try our best to be selfless and be given to others. But today I want to talk to you to the opposite idea. What if in order to be a revolutionary, you actually have to be selfish? Today I want us to talk about why if we want to be revolutionaries, we actually have to be selfish and take care of ourselves first. Throughout this year, I started to notice that I was feeling really shitty. And, but most importantly, very recently, I started to notice that so have the people around me. They've been feeling shitty. And it's my guess that probably you at home have probably been feeling really shitty too. Because like we all try so hard to grow up and you know do all the things that we see on TV that, we, that adults get to do, like go to work, um, shop, travel, you know, everything that the, the the images on TV and on television tell us that we will get to do this and that when we're old and we're adults and we're in control of our lives. But actually, we get to be an adult and we figure out that all of adulthood is, is like routine. Like we wake up and we rush to go to work and then we're at work for eight hours and then we rush to get home and then we go home and we do nothing or maybe you have your hobby or you know your activities that you go to maybe you go out with your friends but then you rush to get to bed on time right and then we sleep and then we just do it all over and over and over and over and over again and why <laughs> number one because <laughs> like unfortunately i think many of us try to cope with this frustration through doing drugs, smoking, going to drink, partying, or, or turning towards food or sex in an unhealthy way. Because all of us are feeling all this frustration with like just routine. That's really what it really comes down to for me. What makes me feel um, bad on a day-to-day -day basis is just trying to keep up with a routine, just trying to make it a work on time, trying to f cook my dinner at home, you know, when I get home. And like on top of all of this, if you live in the US, you've been having to deal with Trump and you know, his gangsta friends like taking over the White House and like dominating all the daily news and like terrorizing us really for all their with all their crimes against humanity and it's like barely 9 a.m. Pacific time on a day-to-day -day basis. And yeah, this whole fucking year I just felt like I was just fighting to like be okay. And Maybe some of you at home have felt like that too and I just wanted to let you know or remind you about self-care. There were a couple things for me um, that made this year really difficult. The first one being something happened at work which um, made me feel like I didn't want to work there anymore. I don't really want to say why because in number one it's irrelevant and number two I don't want to get sued. <laughs> but you know, suffice it to say that Early this year, in like January, I felt like I realized that I didn't want to go to that job anymore. And not only was that stressful because, you know, I had to go to work day in and day out and do my best work, but I felt like I had to kind of swallow my pride and be angry and I couldn't really talk about it to anyone at work. So I just had to, you know, go to work and pretend that I'm having a good time. And so that's stressful. And I don't think I've ever shared like what I do on this channel because I've always saw my job like in a very negative light because like um, what I do is I'm an executive assistant which is like a personal secretary to an executive and I just felt like well clearly that's not art so it's not my passion I'm not doing what I love it's just a job that pays my rent. So just by the fact that I looked at my job in that way, that also creates a lot of negative emotions and stress when I deal with work. Um, and so this year, all kind, everything kind of just culminated in a, just a lot of you know shitty feelings, really. And the reason why I lasted so long on this job was because, uh, well, number one, I paid my rent, <laughs> but number two, like I felt like I had enough brain power 
and energy when I got home to work on the things that I really love like making videos or writing or painting and I could afford to go to a painting class on a Saturday um, eventually you know I, I could go to yoga I could go to now kickboxing um, and all those things made me so happy that and I was feeling okay at the work at first that the four years just went by but like I said, I just started, everything went downhill this year. Like I just started to, f to know like, okay, I can't stay here anymore. Now I've also shared a little bit when I came back this year that I started to do kickboxing. And I realized like I've always been athletic. I used to be do dance in school and high, in high school and college. And after college, I used to do yoga. And I've always been kind of very obsessive about um, those things. Uh, arts that I practice like when I was a dancer I would go to dance twice a day I would always have a class in high school or in college and then in the evenings I would go to another studio and take another class or I would like have to go to practice with um, the other dance groups that I was um, affiliated with at the school and so it's no surprise like after college I was very obsessive about yoga at first I would go you know minimum four to six times a week sometimes seven you know i would just try to be in yoga every day as much as possible and of course when i find kickboxing like the same thing happened i try to go to kickboxing like now i'm up to like almost every day depending on how i feel but I, the point i'm getting to is kickboxing started to get to me um to become very mentally frustrating because Unlike dance and unlike yoga, it's a lot more demanding on the body because you know you're punching things, you're kicking, you're taking so much impact. Um, it requires a lot more recovery time, and um, it's not so much the physical um, pain or discomfort that got to me this year. I just I was just so frustrated with the fact that I feel like I'm always uncomfortable physically. And like I said, it's just more of a mental than physical. Um, but that was also, you know, another area that brings a lot of joy to my life. But in this other area, in this other way, just I brought a lot of stress to me this year. So, and then lastly, of course, I hate my job. So now I'm trying to find a new job. And I was looking for a job from February to November. So I went like a whole, like nine months being really stressed out with number one trying to go to interviews and trying to hide the fact that I'm going to interviews to my coworkers, of course and then feeling really frustrated that oh I'm not finding the, the job as quickly as I thought I was going to find that job um, because even though I was upset I didn't want to leave for being angry I wanted to leave because I found a better opportunity and at one point, I just felt like, oh shit, what if I never find a job? <laughs> so that was really stressful too. Um, this is the first time that I'm in a real job and that I last a lot, uh, you know, a long time. And it was really stressful to try to juggle finding a new job and having a job. And, and still, I have to go to work and do as best as I can. So just overall, it was a very difficult year for me. And I'm not saying this so that you like feel bad for me or pity me because. I know I have an easy life really in comparison to what many people around the world have to deal with but I just want to share what I'm going through because I feel like we're in a time where like everybody's just trying to be perfect and um, like it's so annoying and frustrating like you go on Instagram and everybody, everybody has perfect pictures, perfect timelines, perfect everything, perfect job, perfect brand and it's like like it's so difficult to constantly be comparing yourself to trying to be perfect and on top of that you feel like well i want to be a revolutionary and i want to have the perfect revolutionary i want to have like the perfect revolutionary cause or like endeavor and it's really difficult to just continue to feel and exist in that frustration because like if you're anything like me you can barely get to work on time so um Now, one of the positive, unintended consequences of me doing kickboxing was that it actually led me to like love myself a lot. <clears throat> like, 
uh, for example, I think I've shared a little bit with food. It Every time that I eat healthy food, I just feel better when I'm in the gym training. So of course I try to eat better food. Um, and little by little, different areas of my life, I began to try to make myself feel better, right? In, in certain ways. And then I started to notice like how bad I've been feeling about myself um, in the past year or two. Uh, like for example, we got to a point where I would only just wear jeans and t-shirts because like no one, it got to a point where like sometimes I would be the only person at, at my office no one would come in the office so I would feel like well nobody's gonna look at me, why should I look cute? but I always actually was very interested in fashion and I used to make my Barbies clothes I used to try to alter my own clothing I cared about expressing myself through clothes, not like I'm Lady Gaga and I'm all like, you know, weird and like avant-garde or whatever, but I cared more than just like wearing jeans and t-shirts every day. And so I like, I noticed that, hey, there, here's one area where I used to do this that made me happy and I don't do it anymore. Why is that? And when I look back, um, it all kind of takes me back to when I first discovered, not discovered, but when I first started becoming really serious about yoga after college because I, f I couldn't dance, so it was a way for me to stay active, stay flexible and I started reading all these um, books about yoga and about philosophy and about the soul and I started really feeling like, okay, I want to be more like that um, I want to do good in the world, have a positive impact upon others but unfortunately, of course, I took it way too far <laughs> and I feel like I stopped doing all the things that I enjoyed like, I stopped going out to drink I um, stopped... I like beer! <laughs> I stopped going out to drink I stopped like looking at fashion because I felt like it was superficial I stopped caring about shopping and my clothing and how I looked I stopped wearing as much makeup um, I stopped looking at YouTubers that I felt were like superficial all kinds of stuff that I felt like oh that's not what a, a good yogi or a good revolutionary would do I stopped doing them and at first I felt like yeah I'm being, I was being true to myself or who I want to be but at the same time looking back now I feel like I probably just felt guilty about everything um, because Again, we're always trying to be perfect and if you want to be a revolutionary, you want to be the perfect revolutionary and um, I don't know, every time I learn about revolutionaries, I just feel like, oh, they're selfless, they're perfect and so that's what I have to do, I have to give up all, you know, consumerist culture and like habits and but you know, it just made me like miserable to try to keep myself up to a standard that is not realistic for myself is what I've realized but also what I've realized this year is that when you don't feel good you actually are not in a good position to help others either I think I've mentioned that in a couple of videos before as well and how many of you out at home are wanting to be revolutionaries and holding yourself up try and hold yourself up to unrealistic expectations because you feel like you have to be perfect if you want to change the world for the better and I just want to put this video um, to maybe explore the idea that we well, we will not be perfect no one is perfect, no one can be perfect I'm not perfect, you're not perfect so let's stop trying to hold ourselves to unrealistic expectations and making us feel miserable in the process and in the process, unadvertently holding ourselves back from being the revolutionaries that we can become one day. When we, because when I think when you're happy, when you're full, you can turn around and be yourself to the truest, fullest potential. And if what you want to be is a revolutionary, then of course you want to be operating at your best capacities as a human. So the first thing I want to tell you with this video is that it's okay to do things that make you feel good. And it's okay to indulge in, you know, some guilty pleasures every once in a while In moderation, of course It's important to care about others, but we have to start by caring about ourselves And we have to learn to value and respect and um, repeat the things that make us feel like ourselves and that make us feel good Because that way, we 
can have the fuel to turn around and create new things, create a new world, be a positive impact upon others. And since I had this realization, I've actually taken myself shopping a few times because it's one thing that I stopped doing. And like I said, I just stopped caring about my appearance. Even though I didn't go like the full end of the spectrum and I was like not taking care of myself, you know, I just felt like I used to take a lot, I used to experience a lot more joy in um, when it came to clothes and getting dressed. So I wanted to kind of reclaim that part of myself. And because at the end of the day for me, what I love to do is express myself and it's almost like I rejected this part of myself that I thought wasn't good enough but it's a part of myself and you know that's one thing I've learned about me this year is I want to love all parts of myself not the parts not just the parts that are good but <clears throat> all the parts that we are make you who you are and of course like clothes is a very superficial thing most of us have to start at a more basic level too like are we getting enough rest are we getting enough water are we getting enough food or healthy food and i know that i did not get enough sleep or enough healthy food this entire year because i was just trying to make it to work and make it to interviews <clears throat> and survive kickboxing and so it was just the fashion thing is just an example but self-care comes in the most basic ways really Okay, sorry if there's a weird cut right there, my camera stopped recording. <laughs> but anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is the most giving, generous people sometimes are the ones that think the least about themselves. And so if you find that you've kind of veered too much in that way, please take a break and you know make sure you're getting the adequate amount of sleep, food, rest, and joy. Because all of those things will help you help others a lot more efficiently and you will just you know i think you will experience more joy the second thing i want to tell you with this video is that you are strong enough to not just endure but thrive because of all the challenging experiences that you're having in your life right now it's so easy to go through life and just kind of survive in the, all the negative emotions and feeling really desperate or alone or frustrated and secure. Like I said, this year I was experiencing a lot of negative emotions, especially regarding my new job. Like, am I ever going to find a new job? Like, how did it take this long? Why did it take this long? I was so frustrated. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm almost like very lucky that I'm just naturally a positive person. Like every, you know, I can, I have all the crazy scenarios going through my head and all the negative emotions, but I can usually kind of like snap myself out of it and just say like, I'm going to be okay. Like no matter what happens, I'm, I will survive. Um, and that's honestly what kept me going through the year that I think I always just naturally look for the opportunity um, to learn and to feel okay. Um, I do that naturally and I do it also because I have so much of an interest in self-help that I think I've, at this point I've kind of trained my mind to look for a way, um, look for solutions rather than just like feel sad about the problem all the time. But like I said, I still spend most of the year feeling really shitty about everything um, until like a few days ago when I came across this really cute artwork in Reddit and I'm gonna put the picture up here it's a picture of a broken piñata after it's been hit you know, after the party um, and the artwork is called piñata after the party by user smell the bullshits <laughs> um, and you can see that you know, there, there's a sadness in the piñata but for some reason um, when I saw this image I actually felt like relief and when i opened the thread and to see all the comments um most people were saying that it's actually a really sad picture but the reason i felt relief was because i felt like when i saw this piñata like i get sad that we kind of are killing a piñata when we um when we hit the piñata at a party but of course we're metaphorically but the piñata was made for that purpose the piñata was made to hold all the candy be hit over and over again and then it's gonna explode and give everybody happiness and candy so 
really that piñata can withstand the pain of being hit and punished in order to create that explosion. It was made for that reason. And for some reason, just that thought just made me feel so much better about everything that happened in my whole life. <laughs> Because I feel like, yes, I've endured pain and I've overcome obstacles, but like every single thing that's gone wrong in my life or every difficulty or challenging situation, it made me who I am. And so why, why aren't I made to withstand that pain too? The way that piñata was made to withstand the hitting in order to explode and give happiness. We are in the same way being built we're built to withstand all the pains that life is putting us through that's why they're coming our way they're making us better people and so that just made me feel a lot more calm and like i don't know just a little bit better about all the difficulties of this year and i just wanted to share that feeling with you too and like just let you know like yes feel the pain but we're strong enough to find the gem in that situation like this whole year with looking for a job uh, i've in writing this video i realized like a couple of things i knew like um the situation was asking me to be patient and i kept thinking about that the whole year like don't get desperate don't get uh, frustrated don't feel like like there's no hope like just it was inviting me to develop patience um not just for the situation but just in my life patience for people that I feel like behave in a way that I feel like they shouldn't patience for myself when I behave in ways that I feel like they, I shouldn't patience when I all the time and then like I said I have been f just feeling like bad about the job that I do not necessarily bad but I didn't like feel good you know I didn't it was like I didn't really feel proud about it but because I had to go on so many interviews this year and like sell myself I actually feel a lot better about the job that I do because I used to think all I do all day is send emails and answer the phones but actually I realized that what I do is a lot more than that I help connect everybody in the office I help create a positive environment because I have a positive and friendly demeanor and that encourages other people to be friendly to be caring towards one another and so i create a lot more at work than just emails and phone calls i create all kinds of relationships i create a safe space for people and it just made me feel a lot better and i would have never recognized those things about my job and i would have gone on to my next job you know just feeling bad about what i do but now i feel like wow i'm like really powerful in the position that i am because i have so much influence on other people it's not just emails and answering the phone it's like i feel a lot better about what i do and i would have never realized that about myself if i didn't you know last nine months trying to get a new job and going on interview and after interview after interview and like it's taking me all this time in life to realize like why we need negative experiences why we need negative emotions in our lives but also it's taken me all this time to realize like i'm strong enough to survive all those experiences and so are you and you are also strong enough to take a negative experience and build yourself and make yourself more develop new abilities in yourself um develop areas in your life that you felt like you weren't capable of developing or maybe um just changing your outlook on life you're we're all capable of doing those things and the challenges in our lives are inviting us to create those changes and i think one of the strongest ways to address all the pains and the challenges that we feel is through self-care as well and if you don't feel enough it's like if you don't feel and if you don't feel powerful enough to care about yourself look around you and ask for help I know that I'm guilty of always feeling like nobody wants to hear my problems, nobody wants to, um, you know, care or be or be bothered. But as I spend the year trying to do more and more little things that make me happy, I started going on YouTube a lot more and commenting on videos again and watching um, bloggers again. Um, and all these videos started coming up about Jake Paul and all the documentary with Shane Dawson. And that actually led me 
to the videos and that actually led me to the videos on Graveyard Girl and you know about her channel dying or whatever and when I saw all the comments on her videos everybody was saying like we just want to see you being yourself we just want to know what you're going through we just want to see the real you and and I think this is true for real life as well our friends and our family members they want to know that you're suffering too it's okay to let them know because they're probably suffering as well and just like us they're looking at all these instagram pictures or this facebook stuff like even my mom and my aunts are on facebook now and everybody's just being subjected to this like standard of perfection which is unreal and i think everybody just wants to go back to knowing that we're all imperfect like on youtube and in real life I don't know that's why i'm like back to sharing a little bit more about my life because like i mentioned in um, the last couple of videos and i can now pinpoint this to um the yoga thing too <laughs> like i just started f um feeling like you know i don't i can't i don't have an amazing life like i'm not going on exotic vacations like why would i share about my life why would i want other people to know like all I do is go to work and get home and try to do something fun as much as I can and then go to work and but it's like like all these exposing and bitching on YouTube let's just just let me realize like we all just want to know that our life experience is normal and also we just want to see how other humans live around the world and experience life and it's okay to not be perfect and it's okay to not be perfect if you're a revolutionary and it's not it's okay to not be a perfect revolutionary because there is no such thing and that's all really i wanted to say to you today you were built to withstand your pain and all of the painful experiences or challenging experiences we're going through they're really where we're gonna develop all the amazing skills that we will need in order to be a good leader and eventually be revolutionaries so don't be afraid of being imperfect on your road to getting there and thank you for watching if you still are please subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and if you'd like to be emailed whenever i put a new video up because god knows that youtube will not do that uh properly please go ahead and <laughs> subscribe to my newsletter at maymayleeling.com and i promise that i don't send emails all the time if ever because you already know i'm not very good at keeping a schedule with posting <laughs> so um, go ahead and subscribe to me, follow me on Instagram, maymaylamin underscore and thank you. Please let me know in the comment section what difficult um, moments in your life you're going through this year, if you can share, and what you learned, what, you think, um, what qualities you think life was asking you to develop during those times. See you next time.